Hey, what's going on folks? Larry of Packmasters Dog Training here. I want to talk about something here. Um, in regards to uh, the use of an e-collar, remote collar, shock collar, whatever it calls, I want to get this off my chest a little bit and, and get this discussion going. So this might run on a little bit, but I think it's really, really important, especially with all the things that have gone on in the past couple of weeks, okay? First, let me explain why I started doing these little videos here with me talking inside my car. Let me tell you how that started, okay? I got a message once that someone commented on one of my YouTube videos, an e-collar video. And I clicked on the message and I was actually in my car and I read it and I was appalled on what I had seen. It was a dog trainer, professional dog trainer, well, they called themselves a professional dog trainer up in Ohio, I believe it was. And what she said was she had been following all my stuff and watching my videos. And uh, she's having issues with this one dog when it comes to the conditioning of the e-collar, something to that effect. And then she went on to describe what she was doing to this dog with the e-collar and how the dog was responding. And it was absolutely brutal. It horrified me. I was so disturbed and so upset because first of all, anything I've ever put out, my intentions were the exact opposite, to have people avoid doing that kind of things to dogs. And I'm a pretty slow typer. I'm a one finger typer and I could not get my message out fast enough through typing. So I went ahead and I recorded a message to her and I posted it. And I posted it publicly because it was really damaging to me. It was straight up abuse. And I said that in the video. And that was the first time I ever made one of these videos in the car. And that was the reason behind it. And once I posted it publicly, um, I also offered that, that trainer, I offered her free training. I told her if she comes to me, I will help her and teach her the right way. To which I never heard from her. But I posted it and people wanted me to discuss more topics. And that's how that started, okay? So let me say that. But again, my intentions by putting out so much e-collar stuff over the years was the exact opposite. To hopefully avoid people doing that to dogs. And of course, that's still going on as we know. All right? Um, most recently, over the past couple of years, we've seen several videos of just awful treatment of the dogs through the e-collar. Most recently, it was a female trainer that posted a video. Like I said, and she posted the video. She was very proud of this work. If I'm not mistaken, it was a young Rottweiler in a crate. And she was basically lighting this dog up with the e-collar to achieve, I guess these days, what they're calling it, a double down. So she wanted the young dog, and I want to say the dog was like four months old. Very, very young. She wanted the dog not only to lay down in the crate, but also have its head plastered. That was what she wanted. And to achieve that, she was lighting this dog up with the e-collar. Again, absolutely horrific treatment of an animal. Horrific. And she was very proud of this. So there was an outpouring of disgust. Like people went after her. Some tried to be very helpful and tell her, you know, these are people you can contact. She didn't want to hear it. She didn't want to hear it. What she tried to say was that all these people attacking her were purely positive Nazis going after her because she uses tools. When in fact, it was quite opposite. It was all so-called balance trainers attacking her because it was straight up mistreatment of an animal. It really was. It was awful. And over the years, there's been several videos like that. The funny thing is, her and some of the other videos I'm talking about all learn from the same people. Everyone knew that. It was, it was public. Not one time did those people, those trainers who are teaching a lot of people ever speak up and say, this is not what we promote. This is not what we encourage. And the reason they didn't is because that's what they do. That's how they train. So most recently when there was a lot of conflict in the dog training world and a few people spoke up about, you know, abuse allegations and everything, just understand why. Just understand that the people that did speak up, they have nothing to gain by doing so, okay? 
they're truly concerned about what's going on. Because when you have people teaching that to other trainers, and then those trainers are teaching it to other trainers and students, it just keeps going. And then the misuse of this tool keeps going and going and going. And that's what the general public sees and why the tool is made to be in such bad light all over the world. It's absolutely disgusting and there's no reason for it in this day and age with all the good information out there that so many provide. Okay, a lot of good people putting out a lot of good information. All right. Then just the other day, I commented on a post. Well, I didn't comment. I commented about it. There is a post on a balanced training, a balanced dog trainer group, balanced dog training group on Facebook. And the question someone asked was, do you use e-collars? And if not, why not? And I looked at that and I started reading the comments and and I was appalled. I was blown away. I was so disgusted. So these are so-called balanced trainers and all the ones that said no, the reasons why were very disturbing to me. And it made me see just how many people have absolutely no clue, not only what they are doing with dogs, but how to use the tools available to us. And that is destroying us from the inside out. It really is. Again, these were not force-free or purely positive people. These were so-called balanced trainers. And the reasons they gave why they don't use e-collars, it said everything. It, it, it said a ton. And I was about to comment on the post. And I said, why bother? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I know there was no help for those people. You know, and I talked about that. And, and I made my own post. And there were tons of... of comments on it, but it's very disturbing, guys. In this day and age, there's no reason for ignorance in the dog training community. There, there, there just isn't. So, which leads me up to the next part. I worked with a dog recently, um, a couple weeks ago, big, powerful dog, very big, strong, powerful dog. Um, no problems with the family, very, very loving with the family, young children, everything. Outside of that, extremely reactive to all people, all strangers, all animals. And the dog's just too big and strong for the owners to handle. Up until this point, the go-to method has been prong collar and e-collar corrections, like we see over and over again. Over and over again, right? And it didn't work. All it did was make things worse. So there was no progress with this dog when it comes to strangers and animals, other dogs especially. But yet it's been corrected and punished probably thousands of times to no avail, all right? So now this was a special circumstance. I had very, very limited time to work with this dog, very limited time. I probably could have handled the leash, probably without getting bit, maybe, not sure, but it would have put a lot of stress on me and a lot of stress on the dog. And I had very limited time. So I decided to allow the owners to do everything because, because of the limited time I have, the only way I'm going to get any success with this dog that's been failing for a long time now is to truly get some education in the owner's hands to where they can continue and make real progress, real everlasting progress. And what I mean by that, that means that Two, three years from now, after we fix this dog, if that dog looks at dogs and people, it's not just trying to avoid punishment. It truly doesn't care. That's my goal, right? So I had to start from the ground up, right at the basics. So the dog's in the crate. And of course, once the owners go to put the leash on and get it out of the crate, there's chaos. Whining, screaming, anxiety, total chaos. There's no way we could bring the dog out like that and think we're going to have success. So the first thing I do, like I do with a lot of people, was I had the owners go outside. I open my back door and then I open the crate, have the dog off leash and allow the dog just to go outside. Now, there was a chance that that dog can come at me or he can run to be to his owners outside. And what I believed in my heart was because of all the anxiety the dog shows me around the owners, I did truly believe that the dog would choose to get to the owners instead of coming for me, okay? And that's what happened, thank God. 
So now once the dog's outside, I just keep him off leash. I have a tennis racket in my hand to protect me if the dog comes at me, but I wanted to see the dog, how the dog interacts off leash. And so I don't even remember what we did, if we did any obedience, I don't think so. It was just more of interacting with the owners to see how the dog responds. Every now and then the dog would come kind of close to me, but I didn't react in, in any specific way. And it never made an attempt to get me, even when I got closer to the owners, okay? So just being off leash and me not doing anything stupid helped the dog from there. And we did this, I don't know, probably 20 minutes we spent with the dog, uh, again, moving around, having the owners do little interactions with the dog and, and see how the dog responds. I wanted to see just how obedient the dog was. And what I noticed was the dog responds very well to all the basic commands, but only for limited time. Meaning if the dog is asked to down, it will down, but it's not going to stay there very long. Or sometimes the owner has to repeat 10 times for the dog to down or sit or come, any of that stuff. But there is a limited time that the dog will stick to that command. I also wanted to see how the dog responds to the release command, which it did have. But what I saw was the dog truly doesn't know the release command, okay? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It all pertains on the body language and the energy of the owners. So after about 20 minutes, I had them put the dog away, okay? We put the dog away and we let the dog rest. We come out probably an hour later to do our next lesson. Now this time we have the dog in a bigger pen and I do want to take the dog out on leash so I instruct the owners how to get the dog and we aren't going to do it when the dog's worked up. So I'll try to speed this up for video purposes. So I worked with the owners on not allowing the dog out excited. So every time the dog tried to bolt out, I had them slam the door and not let the dog out. So after probably 10 tries, the dog started understanding it a little bit, okay? Had a little bit of a concept like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna get out of here free of charge like that. And then to get the leash on was another story, but we weren't gonna do it till the dog was calm enough to do so, which we did. Then I had the owner bring the dog out of the pen and they were doing very good. The dog had calmed down a lot. Now the next was opening the door and not allowing the dog to bolt out, which it's used to doing. Again, I'll speed this up, but I instructed the owner who pretty much is the same size as the dog. So there's no chance that he can overpower the dog. We did that over and over and I instructed the owner, I don't want you telling the dog sit down or anything. I don't want any commands. I want very limited talking and I don't want anything coming from the e-collar or the prong collar. If you need to stop that dog, I want a good solid bump from your body, from your leg or something. Something that the dog knows is coming from you. I want you to claim that space in front of the dog and I want the dog to respect that space and not move. It took a while but you have to be patient because this is extremely important. If you move forward while that dog is worked up, we're done, we can't win. So they accomplished that. The owners did extremely well in figuring out what worked and what I wanted and they did that. So now once we got out, we did some obedience on leash, all right? The dog did pretty well, but again, has a limited time that it will stay in a position. So at this point, now I worked on the owners fixing the dog from breaking a down or a place or a sit or anything. But prior to what would happen is an e-collar correction or a prong collar correction. So I have to get rid of that, okay? So there's no more corrections when the dog breaks a down. And the reason I do that is the dog doesn't know how to stay down for an unlimited amount of time. It hasn't been taught hasn't got up to that. It knows how to go down, but then it just thinks it's okay to get up when it wants because sometimes it's allowed, sometimes it's punished. We have to make it very clear to the dog. So I think, I can't remember if we worked on a down or a place first, but we did that or a sit, I don't remember. But whatever command we took, I had them do that. And then we started working on some duration and I had the owners move around to where I knew the dog would fail, especially when the owners turned around with their back to the dog, which it did. At that time, I instructed the dog, the owners to correct the dog verbally and then utilize spatial pressure to get the dog back into position, which they did wonderfully. And very quickly, you saw the dog start to get it. It really did want to comply. It's never been 
given the chance to comply or demanded compliance, okay? So very quickly, the st dog started catching on. Next, I wanted to see how the dog responded to the release command when the owner just gives the release command and does nothing else. They gave the release command and the dog did nothing, but it looked like very confused, like, am I allowed to leave or am I not? Just as I suspected. So now I told the people, okay, I want you to give the release command, but then utilize some hand gesture and excitement and move on so the dog knows. The dog starts to learn it now, and we did that. And the dog started catching on very, very quickly, but more importantly, what you saw was the anxiety went away, and now the dog was in work mode. And at that point, we put the dog away again, all right? Now, probably an hour or two hours later, I don't remember exactly, we took the dog out for one last time. This is all I had to work with the dog. The dog was on a mini educator. Working level was, I think, around a 16 or something. But again, I was able to get the dog down to working on single digits. Number five, big, powerful dog. But what I noticed was even on the lowest levels, the dog was very twitchy. And so what I asked the owners was, I'm going to assume that the only time the e-collar is utilized is when the dog does not do, right? To implement correction or punishment. They said, yeah, I said, okay, that's what I thought. That's what the dog's telling me by its reaction, even at the lowest levels. So at that moment, the only thing we did was first, I started working on loose leash walking because the dog does not walk, it pulls like a tank. As hard as a dog can pull, this dog pulls. It'll pee on everything. And we talked about the structured walk and what I demand and expect from the dog. And then we started utilizing things, simple things. No e-collar yet, no prong collar, just change of directions and stuff like that to kind of teach the, well, there is prong collar utilized because the dog was kind of correcting himself at first. And again, I normally don't use the prong collar here, but I'm just going to let the owners use what they were using. And so the dog made good progress there. Okay, he was doing a little better. Now I wanted to jump right in to working with the e-collar, but completely opposite of what was done up until this point. All right. So we're not going to recondition this dog because I don't have time. My time is extremely limited. So what we did was jump right into the intermittent phase. First with just the recall. And so what's important for me at this time is I have to get the owner's mechanics down and timing down impeccably. I used the sound box also. So I knew what was being done if I was to pass the the uh, e-collar off to the dog but also even though I started off with the e-collar I wanted the owners to hear the timing of everything by utilizing the sound box from e-collar technologies so we started in the intermittent phase with the recall that's all we did the four different combinations and it took the owner very limited repetitions before he truly was getting it very well and doing excellent excellent work communicating to the dog extremely clear and the dog changed instantly now the dog was a different dog and you just see the light bulb come off because now the dog's working with the owner in a beautiful way okay after we utilized the recall then i wanted the owner just to go for a walk with the dog just start walking loose leash hold the end it was a, a 10 foot line just hold the very end don't worry if the leash is under the dog because it's loose it's not going to trip them up and they did that and you know what the dog did the dog walked right at their side without ever going ahead no utiliz no utilization of any tools i'd tell the owner okay turn now the dog would turn and follow them now we're just providing a different picture with the dog okay now what i did was i had them do that a few more times but now i would tap when the dog turn when the owner turned just like I always do and the dog's really getting a different picture now from the e-collar and the handler next we utilize the place command again in the intermittent phase e-collar no e-collar food rewards no food rewards you guys know the deal I'm not going to go through it step by step I've done plenty about it we started utilizing the place command in the intermittent phase and adding duration immediately okay again limited time what we saw was the second the dog was on the place command, I had the owner turn around with his back to the dog and make like he was running away to, of course, which the dog was about to take off because he thought that's what he's supposed to do. At that time, I had the owner implement a verbal correction, a uh-uh, and close the gap quickly with spatial pressure. 
the dog jumped right back up on the place. No e-collar correction, no punishment, as so many people do right away because the dog broke the place. The dog broke the place because he thought he was supposed to. You have to understand that. You have to see things from the dog's perspective. So from that couple of repetitions doing that, the dog got it beautifully. And now you can see the dog focused on the owner and he's truly paying attention to what the owner says. And now when we start giving the free dog command, he's still hesitating. So at one point I said, okay, release the dog from there with the free dog command, and they did. And the dog moved forward, but he stared with his head down at them, waiting for further direction because he wasn't so sure. So we worked on that. And very quickly, the dog started understanding it, okay? So now when the dog, when the owner was at a distance and the dog was on the place command, instead of giving the free dog command to release him from a distance, what I did was use the marker word, yes, from a distance, which the dog does understand well, especially from the previous repetitions. So the dog flew to the owner to get the reward, okay? Because we are going to reward the dog on the place and coming off of it. We're gonna do it both ways. So the dog truly understands the command. So I know there's a lot of people that will never mark and reward with the dog at a distance because they think they learn to break it down or a place then. It's not true. I've always done both. And my dogs will hold a down or a place I, as, long as, as long as I need them to. But it's important to do it both ways, okay? Now, we did some work there and not a ton of work. We worked on the recall. We worked on some walking. We worked on some place. We added some duration work all in a very short amount of time. And then we released the dog and we just hung out and walked around. And you know what the dog did? For the first time, there was no whining, no anxiety, no stress. The dog was a normal dog. I had the owner do a little walking at a super slow pace, which an hour before, there's no way the dog can do. Super slow pace. The dog moved at his side at a super slow pace. Go at a fast pace, dog stayed with him at a fast pace. Slow it down, dog slowed down. Can I have made great strives with this dog without the e-collar i could have would have taken much much longer much longer did i ever once implement a correction or punishment with the e-collar not a single time not a single time was that dog corrected with the e-collar because what i had to do was change the mindset of that dog from constant corrections through the prong collar or the e-collar I had to show him the right picture but more importantly I had to show the owners the right picture and seeing is believing so when you could tell someone what their dog's going to do when we do this next thing and the dog does it anyone will believe you at that point and they'll give you everything so this owner did remarkable did fantastic and so in a very short period of time that dog started responding the way we needed it to, like a dog. And we were able to relieve a ton of that stress and anxiety. Now, is that dog fixed? No, not even close. Not even close. But if the owners continue to do what we did, it's going to turn fastly, quickly. My speech is great today, okay? And what I explained to them, I said, give me five minutes twice a day. Like I tell a lot of people, because I know people with real lives are extremely busy and if you ask for 30 minutes twice a day three times a day it's not going to happen people can't do that so I asked give me five minutes twice a day and work on the intermittent face this they said well I could do that I know you can absolutely that's going to go a long way but what I also told them was what I want you to understand is if you're with this dog you're training so you have to decide am I training for good or training for bad right now and when you're inside that home with this dog you are training. That I need from you 24 seven. And they got it. And they were 100% in agreement. And I know we're going to do what they need to do because when you can't take your dog anywhere because it overpowers you and wants to get to everyone, that's a dangerous situation and you can't enjoy your dog. And so the whole reason I talked about so many things leading up to this because it's all tied into the proper use of the e-collar. 
With the proper use of today's modern dog training, we can make unbelievable things happen with that tool. And not one time did I ever have to punish that dog because it got off a place board or got out of a down so fast. It's, it's just, it's not the most effective thing to do. If it was, that's what I would do. But for people who have been doing this long enough and learned, learned to change as training got better, you know, took the time to get educated and get better. Training today is by far the best it's ever been for the dog and the handler. Dogs are doing more spectacular things with more life and more energy with less conflict and punishment. So there's no excuse. So, so for these people that are still taking this tool and just using it as the big stick, you're missing the boat. Because if you use the small stick as a pointer, you're gonna see unbelievable things happen, I promise you. And so for you folks that support people that continue to spread the idea that it's all about punishment and punishment and punishment and turning your dog into mashed potatoes, shame on you, shame on you. You're destroying the industry and you're destroying one dog after another, one dog after another, okay? There is no way I could be successful with this dog just by utilizing punishment. Just like there's no way I could be successful with this dog just by using treats and unicorn farts. Doesn't happen, okay? There's a fine line in the middle that will bring you true success. I promise you, a lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are doing great things. But the force-free, purely positive fanatics, and I say fanatics because not all force-free trainers are like that. You know what I mean? I have no problem with force-free trainers. But as, as the good ones know, and there's some great ones out there, they're limited on what they can take on when it comes to a dog with problems. And they know that. They'll tell you that. Okay? But on the other side of the aisle, for the so-called balanced trainers that preach punishment over and over and over and continue just to fry dogs, light dogs up with e-collars, and yank the shit out of them with prong collars... You're worse than the purely positive Nazis because not only are you harming dogs, you're harming the industry and you're giving the people who want to take our tools all the ammunition in the world. That's all I got to say about that. Peace.